Um, so much like Elliot, uh, my story is about what it means to be cool or trying to figure that out. And for the longest time, I had this obsession with what does it mean to be a badass? I was like, looking into it. And I thought, <laughs> I was like, is it smoking? Is it, is it a leather jacket? Is it multiple lovers? Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it karate? I, but um, I actually realized it's pretty simple to attain this because my mother did through a very simple act of trying to purchase a t-shirt for me. Um, so a couple things about my mom. She's 63. She's five foot two. Um, she is polite to a fault with strangers. Um, she's brutally honest if you are related to her. Uh, she's really high strung, like really, really nervous, but she teaches little kids meditation and relaxation in elementary schools. Um, she loves the Beatles, um, but only up until Sgt. Pepper, because then they just get weird. And she has this weird thing about, uh, about always making sure that insects that come into her home are able to safely get out. There was one time where we spent 15 minutes trying to capture this spider that had come into the light fixture, and then we finally got it out, and we get it outside, and she's completely being genuine and sincere and heartfelt, and she says, okay, now go find your mom. Like, from the heart. I mean, seriously, guys, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. So, really, she, she's all heart, but very nervous and can sometimes um, make you feel bad about yourself. Um, but <laughs> that said, uh, she's also been incredibly encouraging in my pursuit of trying to figure out what this means to be a badass. So, when I was about 10, I was convinced that it was two words, Paula Abdul, and it was becoming a fantastic dancer, and I was so... Um, obsessed with this that there was one time where I had some friends over my mom was really nice and she let us work on this choreography to cold-hearted snake uh, the remix version in our bedroom and um, I got so in angry at one of my friends because she had forgotten what the moves were even though I told her time and time again that I pretty much had my first rage blackout um, <laughs> That, that I, I only remembered it 15 years later when someone mentioned, like, hey, do you remember that time when we were choreographing that thing and you threw that bottle of moisturizer um, at that girl's face? And I don't, I don't mean like a travel size moisturizer. I mean like, like a Costco size, like lube for years kind of moisturizer container. Um, I shouldn't have said that you shouldn't use lube. Uh, you should use moisturizer as lube. It's not really... Just, just FYI. Just, okay. Anyway, so that was one thing that happened. But then from there, I moved to about when I was about 12, where it became all about rock music. And it was because of a boy that I had a big crush on who was very cute and really nice. And he teased me. So, you know. Uh, so I was really into Janet Jackson and Mariah Carey. But I was like, fuck that. I can get into rock music too to get him to love me. Um, so I was just like, I'm just going just gonna to get my palate wet. And uh, I'll confess this now, when I first heard Nirvana, my immediate thought was, so loud. <laughs> Why is he, I can hear you. You don't need to be this loud. Like, I just kind of wanted to give him a hug because he seemed so sad. And uh, I could only listen to one side of a Rage Against the Machine tape and then had to turn it off because it was just too mad. And so this is like one side one week and then the next week I'm like, okay, I can put on the other side of your empire <laughs> and everything will be fine. Um, but what I really missed were like pretty voices and people who could sing in key. And so I found this compromise through this band that became my favorite band, and they were called Moist. Um, I know what you're thinking. No, I don't know what you're thinking. I have no idea. Um, because in my school, there were, it was mixed opinions. Some people thought they were great, and by some, I mean there were maybe two of us in a grade of 120. And most people just thought that uh, the name was stupid, and that the singer looked like a girl, which I thought was great. Um, so the, uh, the thing was, there was, it was Christmas, and I was 14 years old, and all I wanted, uh, the only thing on my list was a moist t-shirt. And in, in hindsight, that name does need some revision. Um, so I told my mom that she could go get one. This is in Montreal, so I was like, you can go get it at the Eden Center in Montreal. I know there's a store that has them. Failing that, there is another place on St. Catherine and St. Laurent where I'm sure they have them. My friend told me they're there and uh, you'll be able to pick it up, no problem. 
Two things I didn't know. One was that I wasn't really um, well informed on the city. I had no idea I was sending her into the pre-gentrified red light district of Montreal. Uh, the other thing I didn't know was that the store I was sending her to was not a boutique, but a very, very seedy head shop. Um, so she, she didn't seem too nervous about it. She described it later and she said that on the front door there was a poster that had 69 different sexual positions complete with <laughs> descriptions and photos for those who couldn't read. Um, but she went in anyway and she didn't really mind and so she starts looking around and people are sort of staring at her like why is this tiny silver haired woman, you know, looking around through bombs and black light posters while, you know, Pink Floyd is playing. Uh, so she can't find it. So she goes to the cashier and he doesn't look up at her and she's just like, hello, um, I'm trying to find this moist t-shirt for my daughters for Christmas. Could you help me? And he doesn't look up, but he's just like, we don't have any. And so she's like, oh, okay, fine. So she keeps looking around. Another 10 minutes go by. She goes back to him and she's just like, I still really can't find it. I could really use your help. And he gets annoyed with her for no reason and just looks up and is like, look, we don't have any, sorry. Uh, which is a really weird tone to take if your position in life is a cashier at a head shop. I just wanted to, <laughs> it's a little much. Um, so she gives him this look, which I don't know if any of your parents do this, but it's basically this. She would give that to me when I was four. It still scares me now. Um, where she just kind of looks directly into your soul and you know, you realize all the life choices you've made are bad. Um, and so she's looking at this guy with just death in his eye, in her eyes, and, uh, and she, she, like I said, she's really small, but she decides to, um, to just lay down with him. And she's like, look, Christmas is coming up. It's freezing cold outside. Do you know how cold it is outside? I came here in a storm. My daughter wants one thing for Christmas. There's one thing on her list and it's a stupid moist t-shirt. I don't even know why she likes the band, but you're gonna help me find it. So then he got scared. And she's telling me this story as I'm opening up uh, my Christmas gift in the morning, my dad's passed it to me. And I'm thinking, this is really cute. She's trying to soften the blow because she's obviously failed in her mission. And I'm going through the tissue paper and she's telling me this and kind of getting progressively excited. And I'm pulling it aside and I see just a tiny, tiny bit of black jersey. So I start to pull it out and I'm like, holy crap. She managed to get me this t-shirt and it was perfect. It was the one thing I wanted for Christmas and I got it. So now looking back, whenever I think, what does it mean to be a badass? Do you need to smoke? Not really. It doesn't mean having multiple lovers or karate or throwing moisturizer at somebody's head. Sometimes it just means being cool enough and sweet enough to be a badass and go to a really seedy head shop to get a t-shirt for your daughter just so she can feel like one too. Thank you.